Hey there, here we go into finding the area of limacons or limacons, where we have inner loops, and sometimes we have to find the area of the inner loop itself, and sometimes we have to find the area between the outer loop and the inner loop. In this one, it says find the area of the inner loop, and I'm looking over to use my calculator. Um, we're allowed to use our calculator, and we're going to find the inner loop of this thing, 2 plus 4 cosine theta. So to figure that out, we need to first know where the inner loop starts, and where it stops. And I'm going to show you two different integrals that would get you the same exact answer. So the thing that we've got to understand here is that this curve starts here at theta equals 0. And when we go and we trace all along here, if we were to start finding area, we would be finding area of like a sector like that, which overlaps some of what we want, but doesn't give us what we want. So we have to wait till we enter the inner loop right here. And we're going to enter it there. And then we're going to trace out this inner loop like this. That's the area we want. So the question is, what is it, that value right there, when we start entering into the inner loop? And what is this value right here when we get halfway through the inner loop? And then we can double it. Or we can go all the way through the inner loop like this. That's up to you how much of the inner loop you want to do out. I like to do half the inner loop and then double it. So that's the main game plan right there. So let's actually set that plan into motion now. OK, so first things first, to figure out where an inner loop begins, we need to set r equal to 0. So it'd be r equals 2 plus 4 cosine theta equal to 0. And when we solve that out, we'll get, uh, let's see, cosine theta is equal to negative 2 over 4, or negative 1 half. Where do I get that from? I subtracted 2, and I divided 4. So where does that occur? Well, we're only going 0 to 2 pi here. That's all we're concerned with. So cosine theta is negative 1 half at theta equals, that's going to be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So that means that the inner loop, we enter the inner loop here, and we exit here, because that's where our inner loop starts and stops. And I actually go over this in the Limasone graph lesson in lesson 5. So check that out if you're like, wait, what's going on with this inner loop? So we start at 2 pi over 3, we enter the loop there, and we exit it there. So if we're not using symmetry, you would use your normal formula of 1 half r squared d theta, and in this case, the first angle that we'd enter in would be 2 pi over 3. That's where we enter the loop, and then we exit it at 4 pi over 3. That would cover you, as I showed before, all the way around the loop, like that. Now, overall, that simplifies to 1 half. The integral simplifies. I guess we're plugging in for r. 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, of 2 plus 4 cosine theta, all of that squared. And we'd use a calculator to evaluate that, which I'll do shortly. Now, the other way we could do it, is with symmetry. We could figure out where that inner loop is most negative. Now that would be halfway between 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, which happens right here at pi. So that would be 1 half the integral from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. Just kidding. To pi, right? We want that halfway point. It's a funny joke, right? So we'll do that all the way out to pi. And we'll double it. And we're going to double it because what we're doing there is just finding this area right here and then doubling it to find the area of the top part as well. And that would be 2 plus 4 cosine theta, all of that squared. That's it. So I'm going to use my calculator. Both of these will give us the same answer because it gives us the same exact area. I'll be right back with the answer. And magically, there we have our answer, 2.174. And that's the same answer we get for either of those integrals. All right, so that's how to find the area of the inner loop. Now, how do we find the area between the loops of 2 plus 4 sine theta. Now this one is a little bit nastier, and I'm only going to use symmetry here because I find it to be very, very effective. What we need to do here is first recognize that the area between the loops will be all of this area right here. So what I'm noticing here is that in order to find that area, I basically, I need to know when it is that we basically exit the loop right here, right? So if I take a look at this curve, there's a lot going on here, a lot. So it's really important to know where this curve starts um, and then kind of go on from there. Very, very important. Because if I can find the area from here to here, essentially, so this is one of the hardest kinds of problems there is, find the area between the loop, then we're good. But I want this area right here. Now the problem is that if I start finding this area, look what happens. I end up crossing over and finding area of some of that inner loop. So the overall idea that I want here is I want the area um, with the inner loop, so I'll say area with inner, minus 
the area of the inner loop. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I find the area of this sector right here, all of that, that's finding some area that I don't want, which is fine. I just need to subtract it out. I'm going to find the area of this half of the graph, and then I'm going to double it. Now, first things first, we need to know what point this is right here. So we need to know when r is equal to 0, and also kind of get an idea of what's happening here with the graph. So the inner loop will start happening when r, as we saw in the last part of this video, is equal to 0. So it's 2 plus 4 sine theta equals 0. If I subtract 2 from both sides and divide by 4, I'll get sine of theta equals negative 1 half. OK, so now where does that occur? Well, that occurs, just taking a look at a real quick sloppy unit circle, when theta is equal to 7 pi over 6, and then again at 11 pi over 6. So these two values there and there. That's very interesting. Now, we've got a bit of an issue. Because if I'm going to integrate uh, this entire half right here, I've got to start at 11 pi over 6. Why is that? We enter the loop at 7 pi over 6. We exit the loop at 11 pi over 6, and that's exactly where this half, if you will, of this, well, limason begins. So I can't integrate from 11 pi over 6 up to, this would be pi over 2 up here. I can't do that. Imagine this arm kind of sweeping around, because 11 pi over 6 to pi over 2 actually means go from here to here. So I've got to make 11 pi over 6 into negative pi over 6 to make sure that I'm rotating counterclockwise, so negative pi over 6 to pi over 2. Now, that's going to find me the area of this whole half, including the inner loop, which I don't want. More on that in a moment. So that's going to be of r, which is 2 plus 4 sine theta squared d theta. And I'm not going to put anything here because, tech. well, I guess I will, because technically the formula is 1 half that integral, but we're doubling it so that we get the area of the whole thing. So that gives me the area of everything, including the inner loop. Mm. So now i got to subtract out the inner loop. Well, the inner loop, there's multiple ways of finding the area of that. We know that we enter at 7 pi over 6. We exit at 11 pi over 6. So I'll do 1 half, entering at 7 pi over 6, exiting at 11 pi over 6. And that would be of r squared again. So that would be 2 plus 4 sine theta squared d theta. And the reason why we're not accumulating area that we don't want here outside of it is because at 7 pi over 6 we've entered here, we're finding all this area right there. And then we're coming back around before we get out of that loop. That's what this is finding. So I'm going to put or, we could have just noticed that we're at its most inversed when theta is 3 pi over 2. So we could have done 2 times 1 half from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2, what that finds is half the area of this inner loop, and then we're doubling it. And that would be 2 plus 4 sine theta squared. So it's up to you. There's multiple ways of getting that area. But the overall idea is area of the whole thing minus area of what we don't want. It's actually one of the tougher problems we'll do. I'll be back with you in a jiffy with the answer. And the least important part of this problem, actually, is the answer, believe it or not. It's the setup that's most important to understanding how we get there. We get 33.350 or 33.351 if you're rounding up. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to go over some more area problems. Peace.